Local 4 News starts now with a breaking news alert. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Karen Drew. First at four, we're learning more about a stunning discovery. A woman and her two children found frozen to death in a wooded area in Pontiac. The Oakland County Sheriff just gave us some new information during a news conference. Rod Maloney was there. He joins us now live with the very latest. Rod, what have you found out about this case? Well, what we know is that in this batch of woods behind us here, the old lakeside housing project here in Pontiac is where the three bodies were found. A mother, 35-year-old uh, Monica Kennedy, her son Malik, and also her other son, um, uh, you'll forgive me, I've forgotten his name, but anyway, at this point, the three of them were found dead of hypothermia. It was Malik, by the way, Malik Milton, uh, were found dead of hypothermia in a field just beyond these trees over here, over by Crystal Lake. Now, we're going to show you some video from earlier in the day, and what we know now is that this was born out of a mental health crisis. The father of these two young children and the husband of the woman who died was murdered in 2021, and it would appear that the, the uh, situation was so difficult for her that she began to have uh, notions of uh, people out to get her. At least that's what the sheriff had to say here today. And so let's hear from Sheriff Mike Bouchard and also one of the neighbors who talks about the fact that his neighbors have been talking to him having met this woman and their children over the weekend. The um, woman, the mom, was having a mental health crisis. She believed someone was trying to kill her and that everybody was in on it. It was a conspiracy, so including the police uh, were in on this, trying to kill her. Uh, family members attempted to get her help, but she refused. Oh, that is terrible. It's terrible. I tell you that. I mean, uh, first of all, she, I mean, they, they say she was hungry. I think, well, you know, well, what's hungry got to do with them going out there? sitting in there freezing. Now, what we know is that this house right here, the White House, is where the young daughter, because she was out with her mother and two brothers over the weekend, and the sheriff is saying that they did not have proper winter clothing on, that they were, in fact, freezing, but mom had told them to go to sleep out here in the field. She walked from that field after waking up and was able to get to this house here and ask for help, and that's when the sheriff's department was actually able to find them. There is so much to this. There are so many layers to this story. We certainly have much more to tell about that and also the mental health uh, uh, agencies that were available to her that she refused to get. So we'll take care of all of that coming up on Local 4 News at 5 and yet again at 6. Reporting live in Pontiac, Rod Maloney, Local 4. All right, thank you, Rod. Horribly sad. We will, we will check back with you tonight at 5. Thanks. Tonight is one of those nights that we will be tracking the exact track 40 radar very closely. Some soaking rain on the way. Kim Adams has a preview of how this is all going to play out for us. Kim. Well, we'll make it through the first part of the evening commute dry. If you have an early commute and you live on the east side, you're fine. But if you're on the west side, you will have a few showers and it could be heavy at times. Let's zoom in a little bit closer for you. Heartland getting some rain right now, but it's still dry in Novi and Livonia. Ann Arbor getting rain, but again, on the east side, it's still dry, but that's going to uh, come to an end here. After about 6 o'clock, all of Metro Detroit will see widespread rain. Now, temperatures are going to be key, but it looks at this point like they will stay above freezing. So let's talk about those temperatures right now. 37 in Pontiac, also in Mount Clemens, 41 City Airport, upper 30s at Metro. We'll watch the temps very closely, but we do not expect them to drop below freezing. As you can see the temperature trend, we're going to be very warm this week before we cool down briefly over the weekend, but a definitely a mild trend. I'll have your forecast coming up. All right. Thank you, Kim. Detroit police are looking for answers this afternoon after an officer shot a man during a really unusual situation on the city's west side. The chief of police says the suspect walked into a sit -go station on eight mile near Berg. They believe he was heavily armed and then locked the entrance. The clerk called 911 as the man was moving around erratically. A customer also called for help, believing the guy inside pointed a gun at her. Police surrounded the station, demanded he put the gun down, and the chief says when he pointed a gun at an officer, the officer opened fire. Police are reviewing evidence, including green light cameras.
We'll be looking at all the video uh, and we'll be looking to see exactly who he is and what his intentions were. Clearly, uh, there was something nefarious in his plans. Um, we do believe that the officer's actions perhaps stopped a robbery, maybe even uh, worse. Um, so they were heroic, uh, on time, and doing exactly what we, we want them doing out here, keeping our community safe. The suspect was rushed to the hospital, was conscious and taken into surgery. We're keeping an eye on his condition. Meantime, the investigation and the latest, we will have a live update for you on Local 4 News at 5. At this hour, Healthcare Workers Union is getting ready to outline some demands for new contracts at local nursing homes. SEIU Healthcare Michigan has scheduled a news conference. It's going to happen in just a few minutes. This action includes more than 1,000 nursing home workers in 13 facilities owned by Siena, Patel, Orchard, Aptalis, and Pioneer. They say they're pushing for living wages, also safer staffing levels. They plan to outline their next steps in case they can't negotiate new deals. We'll have a live update on Local 4 News at 530. President Biden is honoring the legacy of the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. There are tributes, marches, and community activities all around the country. The president joined the National Action Network celebration in Washington, D.C. this morning. King's son, Martin Luther King III, said his father's dream is not quite achieved, but there's been progress. The president says honoring the late reverend is something we need to do over and over again. This is a time for choosing. Will we choose democracy over autocracy or community over chaos, love or hate? These are the questions of our time that I ran for president to try to help answer and that Dr. King's life and legacy, in my view, show us the way forward. We just have to look back. We got to be prepared. King's son also stopped at his father's memorial on the National Mall for a wreath laying event. One speaker says, King's I Have a Dream are four words etched in America's collective memory and still ringing in the ears of today's civil rights leaders. Meantime, Metro Detroiters have been honoring Dr. King during events all over the area, from Pontiac to Farmington Hills to Southfield and many more. Tonight, the focus moves to Detroit's Fox Theater for a program called Let Freedom Ring with Rainbow Push founder, the Reverend Jesse Jackson. Paula Tubman joins us now live outside the theater for more on that. Paula? Yeah, hi, we're going to have a little bit more on him in just a moment. I think some people could argue whether or not Detroit is an actual seat of the civil rights movement, but you certainly can't argue that we are certainly a very close chair, given everything this area has done to move civil rights forward. And you could really feel it in the momentum and the kinds of celebrations we saw today. Perhaps the irony in Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s dream is that to see it, imagine it, work for it, live it, and achieve it, you must be fully awake. The dream of equality and being judged by the content of character instead of the color of skin has taken on new meaning with the climate of the nation. I'm living in his legacy. I was never alive during the time that he was alive, but the life that I live is because of all the work that he did and all the other organ organizers during his lifetime did as well. I love the fact that we have equality, that we can be together in schools, we can be together in restaurants, we can be together. I love that his dream has carried on, that it continues to grow. Obviously, we've come a long way from where we started, but there's still a lot, a lot of work to be done. And I feel like MLK has um, established just a, a ground for that, a precedent for that. Um, and now in modern day, we hope to continue that as well. June 23rd, 1963, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. practiced his famous speech in Detroit first at a march. Now the second thing that you can do to help us down in Alabama and Mississippi and all over the South is to work with determination to get rid of any segregation and discrimination in Detroit. And Beverly was there. I have this picture. I pulled it out last night. Um, it was very interesting. For her, the dream is something she still dreams for. It's hard work to be done because the people that was there that did it, they no longer with us. So I'm hoping that someone pick up the pieces and keep keep it moving. At Dawson Elementary and Middle School in Detroit, a day of activities for children and their adults, including honoring Judge Kyra Harris Bolden, Michigan's first black female to sit on the state's highest court. <laughs> And a mural unveiled in her honor also honors the dream 
of Dr. King. Being the first black woman to sit on the Michigan Supreme Court, I think is an awesome achievement, but it has taken until 2023 for us to get to that point. So we are moving forward, uh, but there clearly is much more work to be done. And I think that this is a wonderful day that exemplifies that, celebrating the life and legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. I'm just so honored to be here. I'm too proud. And to be alongside our first black woman on the United States Supreme Court. I think that everyone brings a perspective and a lived experience with them when they're interpreting the law. And I think that's why representation is so important. Having someone that has a similar lived experience and perception of life uh, really makes a difference when you're interpreting the laws in the state of Michigan. Yeah, so we also mentioned earlier, Karen did the MLK celebration at the Fox Theater. Jesse Jackson, Reverend Jesse Jackson, pardon me, is hosting it. Not in great health, everybody. Not in great shape, but still gracious enough to sit down one-on-one -on -one and talk to me about where the dream is and where it's going. But also Kim, Billboard artist, Grammy winner, uh, musician, fascinating conversation with him, talking about how, but not for uh, Dr. King, he couldn't even eat at the places he performs. And we'll have that part of the story coming up at six. Fascinating perspective. Fascinating, Karen. Look forward to those reports. Thanks so much, Paula. We do appreciate it. Still ahead here at 4, roller coaster news from Cedar Point for you. It just is part of a new attraction at the popular theme park. We'll show you what a lot of people are talking about on this Monday afternoon. Also ahead, TikTok bans are spreading across the country. We're going to take a look at where the security backlash stands. But first, it sounds like the ending of Godfather movie. Police arrest Italy's number one fugitive, where they found him, and one of the shocking reasons he's going to be locked up. We'll be right back.